messaged me, you know, while, while we were on Kitty Noms and she's like, Stacy, I can't get my child on. She's sitting here crying because she's missing Kitty Nomics, right? Like, I don't know what you're doing. She says to me in the email, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing is amazing, right? Because she's crying because she's missing her Kittynomics community. And that's what we have on Kittynomics. Like we make it super fun and enjoyable. And the kids really want to learn because guess what? We're, we're giving them the empowerment and we call our kids, what? Young financial literacy ambassadors. And we make that they are ambassadors out there and they now have the knowledge. And I tell them they're authorized to share the information that they're learning. And now kids help keep the parents accountable Hi, good morning, folks. My name is Chris Bud Cowie and the founder of Empowered Facts and also the host of Bizgrams. Each weekday, I come to you at 1130, bringing to you awesome guests. Um, today, we have the privilege of having a dynamic duo, a mother-daughter team. And first off, we have Stacy Brown with us here today and Mickey. Thank you so much for being on our show here today. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Awesome. So they are the founders of Kidonomics, uh, is and it is a fun, informative, and free kid webinar series teaching kids age to sorry age eight to thirteen um, all aspects of financial literacy. That was a lot there, <laughs> but I know at the core of your business, financial literacy for kids is focused and the fundamentals of what you do. So the, can you all tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, so Kittynomics was started uh, back couple, in 2018. Back in 2018, she knows. <laughs> we started back in 2018. We posted a few videos, um, but our goal for Kittynomics was always about trying to help educate kitties, especially me, trying to educate my child about financial literacy. And just going through the process of that when she was a little bit younger, we, we when she was about five, um, she always has like a, a birthday party for her because her birthday is around Halloween and we used to always have a costume birthday party for her. And I had asked her that year, what do you want to be when you, for what do you want to be this year, right? And she said to me, oh, she wanted to be three things. And I said, and one of them was a Disney princess. So I said to her, you know what, instead of being just a Disney prin princess, how about you own a piece of Disney? And we started talking about stocks. So this is me talking to a five-year-old about stocks and what does ownership look like and what what are stocks because her thing was well great do i get all the toys i want right and of course from a five-year-old that's a, that, that is of course the question you're gonna ask right and so no we started talking about stocks and we bought stocks um for her in disney that year so she is the beneficiary of that stock portfolio for herself and just through that through that, those discussions, we wrote a kid's book together called I Will Own a Castle. And it helps kids ages uh, six to nine just learn uh, financial literacy skills through saving and then investing your money, right? So saving what you have and then investing in something big like a castle. And, um, and with that book, that's been a phenomenal experience for her and I. And, and then we started thinking about, well, how else can we affect change? How else can we reach more kids and make it educational, make it fun with financial literacy? And that's how Kittynomics was born. So Kittynomics was born out of the idea of, you know, what if I was having a little bit of a challenge talking to my child about financial literacy? Well, I'm sure other parents were too. And then of course, it's how do you talk to a child about financial literacy if you're lacking the education yourself, right? So we wanted to create a safe place um, where kids can come and get all this knowledge every week um, about financial literacy. So we created 
uh, Kittynomics, and now it runs every single Friday from now it's currently at 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. every Friday Eastern Standard Time. And every week we have a different expert, right, mm -hmm. that comes on Kittynomics and we talk about a different topic related to financial literacy. So we, you know, we discuss everything from stocks, of course, to like bitcoins or and um, the digital economy to mortgages to real estate investing to public speaking and entrepreneurship and um, you know marketing. We cover the vast array of of um, financial literacy and things that surround financial literacy. Like we've also done vision boarding for kids and how to set a positive mindset for kids and how to write a resume and how do you prep for an interview for a job interview. Like we do so much on financial literacy and, and it's all due to the fact that we have phenomenal experts that donate their time every single week to you know share their knowledge about the industry that they're in to the, the young ones. And we have fun every week, right? <laughs> it's fun every week on Kittynomics. We make it fun. We have a great Kittynomics community. The kids have become like really good friends on, on in our community, in our chat box and stuff like that. And now we have kids that join us from all over the world. Like we have parts of Africa, like Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe. We have kids that join us from the Caribbean, Jamaica, um, uh, Jamaica, Barbados, there's Canada. a lot of, of course, Canada. Canada's <laughs> repping all the time on Kittynomics. That's awesome. Um, and like we have the US, we've, we've had Germany, we've had Italy, we've had France that joins the UK. Um, we have kids that join every single week from the UK. <laughs> so it's really become a global thing with Kittynomics and we're super excited to see what Kittynomics has evolved into and how much of an impact Kittynomics has had not only on the kids, but their family and their friends and their community at large. No, that's powerful. And so Mickey, what have you learned along your entrepreneurial journey? I have learned a lot. It feels like you have all this knowledge and there's so many things I just can't really remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that's okay. Maybe some one thing might come to you, but it's true as an entrepreneur, you got to do it all, right? Like you have so many responsibilities and you're learning on the go. So power to you for the work that you're doing alongside mommy. <laughs> Yes. And so I guess if you want to just tell us, oftentimes on the show, we like to tell people about book recommendations. And if you want to just talk a little bit more about, you know, I will own a castle, like that's exciting to me. Like what, what is the narrative in the, in the story? Yeah. So we published, that book was published back in 20, 2019. no, I think 2018, early part of 2018. And it's about a little girl. Um, her name is Mickey. <laughs> her name is Mickey. And uh, it's exactly like our story, our journey. So it's a little girl that, you know, wants to have a costume birthday party for her birthday. And her mom suggests not just having a costume birthday party, but to own the castle that she wants to have the birthday party in. And then it's her journey with her mother about how to save her money. And there's like, and so there's mathematics in the book. Um, and it shows the kids how you save up to something small. So every little bit counts, right? And then it also shows the kids how sometimes, you know, disasters will happen that will affect your money. So for example, there's a hurricane in the book and there's a flood in the book, right? And all these things that happen and it kind of destroys her dream. But how does she rise up to the occasion of pushing past that and still at the end being able to own her castle and become all the things that she said that she wanted to be. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the feel of the book. And we're super excited that we were able to do it together, write the story together and publish it together. And, and you know, it's been such a journey with, um, with Mickey and I'm super proud of her. Like she makes me proud every day, but mm -hmm. I'm super proud of the fact that she is so bold and stepping out and always wanting to engage and always wanting to be impactful um, to help other kids learn. Um, it's, been a, it's been a 
It's been a joy to see. <laughs> yes, and I, I love the dollar signs on the matching t-shirts. Is that the Bitcoin there? Oh, uh, no, it's the Kittynomic shirt. Oh, oh Kittynomic. There's <laughs> awesome. there every Friday or any um, any event that we have, we have our matching Kittynomic shirts. I love the branded swag there. That's awesome. And the book, you know, just tell folks how they can get the book if they're interested um, in yeah. finding the book. So the book is available on amazon.com and .ca, Barnes and Noble, chapters.ca, Indigo, um, uh, basically anywhere where you can find a book. Oh, iTunes. It's available as an ebook. Um, so basically anywhere that you can find a book, it's it, the, the book is available. Awesome. And so, you know, around the topic about financial literacy for kids, um, I, I reflect on my own um, educational journey here in Canada, and it was not something that was taught, you know. Um, I, I tell people, you know, I failed grade 10 math. Um, you know, I was taking the university level and I failed it. Um, but the biggest thing I realized, man, I don't like math. I don't want math. That's not true. I eventually learned that I need math, right? But what I had to take instead or end up taking was math for everyday life. And that math, most people, you know, there's a little bit of shame about taking, you know, college level courses or U level courses in, in high school. And I can honestly say that was the bet, best math class I ever took because it taught me to read a receipt. It taught me about taxes. I learned relevant things for everyday life. So you guys doing the work that you're doing is so powerful. So why is financial literacy so important for kids, in your well, opinion? Yeah, you know, well, here's the thing that I always thought was baffling to me. Um, you know, school teaches our kids about Shakespeare, which <laughs> is like 400 years ago, and nobody talks like that anymore. Right. And I wanted, where is the disconnect in teaching our children about Shakespeare versus teaching our kids about vital life skills? We are not like the, our schooling system is not embracing the fact that, you know, we need to start talking about how to save, how to budget, how to read a receipt, how to do your taxes, which is things that we do talk about on Kittynomics and we, we do have those topics. Um, and so that's why I always found the biggest challenge. I always taught financial literacy with my background. I've taught financial literacy in at-risk communities and in high school. And what I always learned was because it is so lacking in high school or in, in our education system, the challenge was is that when people were exposed to financial literacy, it tended to be that they already have an uh, unhealthy habits towards money and finances. So therefore, then they had a negative impact for a significant amount of years, sometimes to rebuild what they didn't know that they even had in the first place, right? And so I always thought, you know what, especially when I had my daughter, I said, well, financial literacy should be taught at a younger age so that kids grow up with the knowledge and have a healthy relationship towards finances and puts them on the right path to a successful financial future. And here's the thing, people think and, and parents thought, oh my gosh, you know, kids, you know, because we, we start teaching, our, our age demographic is eight to 13. And, and so when I first started Kittynomics, you know, people are like, Stacey, like kids are not going to watch financial literacy for an hour every Friday night, right? They're like, because it's so boring. And, but they think it's so boring. But you know, what I always say is, you know, don't put what, don't put your limitations on somebody else. And mm -hmm. don't let what you think about something stop you from what your child should learn educationally wise, right? And so what we what happens on Kittynomics is like last week, for example, last week, one of our parents messaged me, you know, while, while we were on Kittynomics and she's like, Stacy, I can't get my child on. She's sitting here crying because she's missing Kittynomics, right? Like, I don't know what you're doing. She says to me in the email, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever you're doing is amazing, right? Because she's crying because she's missing her Kittynomics community. And that's what we have on Kittynomics. Like we make it super fun and enjoyable. And the kids really want to learn because guess what? We're, we're giving them the empowerment and we call our kids, what? Young financial literacy ambassadors. 
And we make that they are ambassadors out there and they now have the knowledge and I tell them they're authorized to share the information that they're learning. And now kids help keep the parents accountable. Right? <laughs> So they'll, I get messages from parents. She's like, Stacey, I was in the grocery store. And, you know, he was like, no, 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 this is not in our checklist. And it's, this is beyond our budget. And like, these are the things that happen. So what I'm so, so happy to see and the feedback that I get on Kittynomics is, is the intergenerational learning that happens on our platform. Because it's not just the child that's learning. We have grandmas and grandpas and aunties and uncles and parents like, guess what? Like, if you didn't know anything about Bitcoins and you sit and watch the Bitcoins one with your child, now you know something about Bitcoins. And now you can take that information and you can start researching it on your own, right? And so just the impact that we see that when a child learns young, what happens is it not only has a positive effect for the child, but it has a positive effect for the household and then their friends and family. I get messages all the time. They're like, oh, you know, Jenny was in or Sasha was in, um, you know, the community center when it was open. And they're like, she's telling all the kids about kidnomics and this is what she knows about credit cards. And this is what she knows about, you know, and because guess what? Kids are amazing. And I just every single week, the kids on kidnomics, they ask the most insightful questions. They are so smart and they know things that like when, when we did Bitcoins, I keep on going back to Bitcoins, but when we did Bitcoins, for example, like the kids weren't surprised about Bitcoins because they already knew about digital economy because guess what? They play Roblox and Minecraft and that's all about a digital world. Mm -hmm. So they truly understood the concept and they're like, oh, but what about this? And I heard this about Bitcoins and I heard, and, and they'll say that about so many different vast topics. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal to see the growth that the, that the kids have on, on Kittynomics and not just the kids, but as I said, the families that, you know, message us and like leave us messages on our social media channels to tell us, you know, how well their child is now starting to talk about finances. Yes. That's so powerful. And so Mickey, question for you. What is some, uh, something you want kids to know about, you know, why should they watch Kittynomics? Um, I think because not a lot of people get to learn the knowledge and you never know what you can become one day. Like if you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a basketball player, you know, you have to have the knowledge first to be what you want. And it's something that you want to be. You can't just give, you can't just give it. You can't just, uh, that person just can't give it to you. You have to earn it first. So mm -hmm. what I'm, so I think that knowledge has to be first before you put in something that you want. That is so awesome. That, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And you know, that's one of the reasons why we have BizGrams as well, right? Um, really to give people the knowledge about people like yourself, your mom and yourself, who are who started an initiative, who started a business, who started uh, a program to educate people about a specific topic. And in your case, you're talking about financial literacy for kids, which is so powerful. And it, what you guys are doing, giving that knowledge. And I believe your, your webinars are free. Yeah. So yes. They are free. I, you know, cause I always say, um, we need this information, especially in, you know, minority communities. And so I wanted to make sure that it, it's accessible to all, right? And so, yeah, every week it's free. It's free to sign up. It's free to join whatever webinar that you want on a weekly basis. And uh, yeah, we're every Friday from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Hey, that is so awesome. And one of the things, you know, I, I love the fact that you all are focusing on, on, on kids, but to your point around the impact of the on the household is so moving and powerful, right? And so you affect one life, you know, the smallest life in the household and it had the ripple effects is so huge. And that knowledge kids like to tell you as it is too, right? <laughs> Like the kids will help keep you accountable. Once they learn something, ooh, it's on. Like it's like you can't 
she's like, I had one parent that said, Stacy, I was showing my, my eight-year-old the, you know, like her RESPs. -R and she's like, oh, no, no, no. Miss Stacy's already told me about RESPs and this is what you do and this is what you don't do. And this is, and she's like, Stacy, I was baffled by all the stuff that she's already known about RESPs. And I was just showing her statements, right? Yeah. And she's like, and you need to make sure you're contributing this amount to my RESPs. <laughs> right like they really truly help keep you accountable once they know like once kids know they know so yeah. we like to say on kiddynomics knowledge is our superpower yeah. and hear it and yeah. that's what they do right mickey i think you nailed that on the head too knowledge is your su the superpower that people no need in order to make informed decisions so that's really powerful um so stacy i i you mentioned you started around 2019 we started, well, we, we started the Kittynomics YouTube channel in 2018, 2018. videos, but it is not in the format that we have now. Our weekly video started in May of 2020. So just at the height of the pandemic, yeah. we said, you know what, we could do something on a weekly basis that can help make a difference and a change and an impact um, in our world. And so we have hosted a Kittynomics webinar every Friday and so May uh, 7th will be our anniversary where we're super excited about that. And we have like awesome guests that come on Kittynomics. Like we have Marcy Ian from formerly of The Social. She'll be on Kittynomics on May 21st. This week we have Dr. Jill Andrew. She's the MPP for uh, the St. Paul Toronto Writing. Um, so she'll be on Kittynomics this Friday. We're doing an interview with her. And so as you'll see that we talk about a vast different array of topics relating to financial literacy and every single one of our webinars is recorded so everybody can always check out our Kittynomics YouTube channel to watch any of our past webinars um, and then the new webinar is posted every Friday. But what mm -hmm. we like to say is our, the power though is in our lives. When kids join in our lives, they're actively participating and therefore they, they really retain the information more. Um, but of course you can always watch it back. It's funny, parents will tell me, I just put on the video and they're yelling at the, at the TV, the answers, no, 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 it's this, it's this, because they actively want to participate, right? So mm -hmm. join our lives because our Kittynomics community is like bomb and we love it. And they're super happy and the kids are, the kids do tend to talk. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So if you're if you were looking at us today or after this segment, um, and you have a or know of a kid between the ages of eight to thirteen, definitely you want to dial into Kidonomics to look so that they can learn and grow in this area as well. Um, so Stacy, one other question that I have for you, um, in terms of you mentioned doing this for a year, that is a long time. That's 52 Fridays, you know? No you know? Fridays off. <laughs> yes, no Fridays off. And so if you could just, both of you, Mickey and Stacy, you know, where does the commitment and the resilience and the motivation come from? And how, if you are having days where you're like, man, I'm tired, man, you know, this, this is kind of frustrating. If you've had those moments, how did you overcome those to keep going? That's an awesome question. I'll go first. And then go. Okay. So, I mean, honestly, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. Even if I wanted to stop kittynomics, I wouldn't. I feel like the kids and the parents would like hunt me down and be like, <laughs> where is the kittynomics webinar? Because I get that already when the parents are not able to log in, like they're having a glitch and they're like, Stacy, why? Like, we can't get in, help me. And so, it's just been, honestly, it's been the, the, the feedback and the grassroots, like our community that really have supported and propelled Kittynomics week after week that have shared Kittynomics across so many platforms. Um, and so for, for, for me, it, it, and I'll let Mickey answer the question, um, Kittynomics has grown so much, um, you know, and now we have we have so many things that is coming up on Kittynomics that is developing um, because we see the need. And there's there's honestly no way for me to stop <laughs> Kittynomics, mm. even if I wanted to. I feel like even if I was sick in the hospital, I would have to have the laptop in front of me and we would host a Kittynomics webinar. Yeah. <laughs> 
I love it. I love it. And Mickey, how about yourself? Do you ever have days where you're like, mom, I don't want to do this. And you know, what, what inspires you to keep going? Well, you know, you should never give up on something that you know that can happen that can be really big. And so what I really wanted was to be a big YouTuber and maybe share something that people would recognize and learn more about. So if it was if it was a chance that I had to stop and I can see the big future in the past in the uh, I would see the big future, there was maybe no way I could <laughs> I love it. And I uh, thank you. You both inspired me. So this show, Biz Grands, I've been talking about it for a number of years, wanting to bring entrepreneurs like yourself to the forefront, share your story. Um, and it was last month I officially started, right? And so, you know, and my commitment is every day at 1130. And so I can honestly say that this thing I love it. Like, I'm like, I'm looking forward to it. It's the highlight of my day. I get to meet some dynamic people like yourself. And thank you so much, Mickey, because it's like, you have that vision, right? And you want to keep moving in that momentum, just go back to that place. So thank you so much for sharing that. And so folks, if you're looking and you you know, you might have started and you feel discouraged, you're experiencing some challenges, go back to your why. Um, and when you have raving fans, like the folks at Kidinomics, your fans are going to come to you and say, where are you? <laughs> Oh, they truly will. And, you know, I have one of my favorite quotes by um, Malalia, um, recognizing Happy International Women's Day. And uh, Malalia is the youngest uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, she was the little girl that was shot in the head because she wanted to go to school when she was a child, right? And um, Malalia says, if you, you will never know who stands with you if you don't stand up first. Mm. And think about that. So that means you got to do it. Do it and just see. Yeah. And you will see. I always feel like whatever you believe in your higher power, but what the, the universe will bring it to you and you will find the people to help you along in your journey. And that's been our experience for Kittynomics. And just so every single day, it takes energy to host a show, right? Chris Beth, like it takes, it takes yeah. a lot of energy. It takes, it takes energy out of you. But if you know your why and yeah. you know, and you know the impact that you are having, it pushes you every day mm -hmm. to continue to do your journey and your path that you know that is going to make a impact in somebody else's life. Hey, I like I'm tears are in my eyes as you were talking I'm reflecting about the people that have come alongside me rallying around the work that I'm doing the vision that I have and you know some of them are doing it for free some of them are you know like just the mental sisterhood and support you talk about women international day and you know a shout out to dynamic women in my life on this team at E4X. Um, and, you know, I'm curious, are there other women, you share um, the story, but are there other women that have inspired both of you on your entrepreneurial journey to date? Well, you know, sometimes the entrepreneurial journey can be a very lonely road. Um, but what I will say is I'm very, very blessed to have a mother that is you know, has shown me nothing but strength throughout my life, right? Like throughout my life. And sometimes, and, and that has always shown me how no matter in the face of adversity, because, you know, she's had a lot of adversity um, in her life, right? And, but at the end of the day, she still raised, you know, myself and my two brothers. And she's shown us nothing but love and strength as we continue, as we grew, right? No matter the challenges and, and, and adversities that she's faced. And so I look at, I look at women like my mother, I would say, um, you know, who's your heroes? And I always say my mom, right? Like, because to me, it starts in your home. You know, when you look at heroes, you should see a hero in your household. And I hope I'm that for my daughter. I hope I'm that, <laughs> I hope I'm that for Mickey, but I want her to see strength in the woman that, you know, gave her life. And 
and just see that no matter what happens in life, you know, she, she knows that she, she has a strong foundation to fall on. And I hope that's me, <laughs> but that's me for my mom. Yes. How about you, Mickey? What do you want to say? I just want to say I have the best mommy in the world. <laughs> I 100% agree with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sign that all the way <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome i love it i love it and so what advice do you both have for you know entrepreneurs on their journey and in particular mickey young entrepreneurs people that are just thinking hey i got an idea let's start with you mickey what I, what advice do you have for someone who's a young entrepreneur i think that if you're doing something that starts with knowledge it can be something very good and healthy for other people while they're sharing their, their um, thoughts and part, like um, knowledge that they know and start to share it to other people. And I think that it's a good idea because knowledge shouldn't be a limit. It should be all, all ages. Yeah. You can learn it at any time. Any age. Any age, whether you're eight or 65. <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> yes. And how about yourself, Stacey? Um, what I would say, you know, about being an entrepreneur. Starting, what encouragement do you have for other entrepreneurs on this oftentimes lonely journey? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say is always know your why. Mm -hmm. Always know why you're doing something, because if you know your why, you will tend, even on the days that you're tired and you're like, oh, I, I cannot wear 50 hats at <laughs> one time, you know, because that's, that's the, that's the journey of an entrepreneur, right? Like we are everything, especially when you're a solo entrepreneur, solopreneur, right? Um, but I always say, if you know your why and you know what, you know, what the impact is that you are trying to do and make, it will always propel you forward. So know really and truly whittle it down and know your why, like in one sentence, know your why, why you've committed to this and why, like what is the impact that it's going to make? And therefore, no matter what comes along in your journey, you know, cause there's gonna be things that will come along and help and, and try to deviate you. If you know your why, which is your foundation, it will help no matter what you do propel you forward. Hey, that's so powerful uh, to you both. What, and finally, my final question that I ask all our guests is, what is something phonetical you do to express self-love? And that's fun and epic adventures, great or small, that you do to express self-love. You wanna answer? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, for me, I wanna make people happy. Um, I am very kind to people and I stand up for people who feel down and but she's saying like what do you do for oh, self-love self-love oh. yeah what do you do what do you, which is awesome because she is all hey, well i mean giving happiness like that i'll take it like yeah. if that's what comes to mind i'll take it <laughs> i agree with everything she said um she is she's absolutely all those things and more um but what do you do for self-love self-love it would be like, what do you like to do in your spare time? Play sports and play on my tablet. Play sports and play on her tablet, yes. yes. <laughs> she does, she's a tennis player and she's a basketball player. So, hey, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I guess for myself, this is, you know, this has been a challenging time to have to, to really express self-love. So sometimes I feel like quality time is just time that you can have truly by yourself <laughs> like i'm in a household with kids and and we are we are home and so i think just quality time that i would have by myself so sometimes that for me is just like taking a walk where i can clear my head and just time to myself where i'm not hearing mommy fifty thousand times for the day you know um as as much as you love your kids saying mommy <laughs> but yeah well like sleep in the nighttime i don't get sleep in the tea <laughs> i don't get naps i don't get like we just get i get my little six hours of sleep but you know what it's it's cool 
That's awesome. So finally, can you all tell us how people can find you, where they can get in contact with you, learn more about Kidinomics? Yeah, so we are on pretty much every social media channel. So if you want to check it out on, um, we have www.kidinomics.com or .ca uh, for all of our Canadians. Um, .com or .ca, you can, and if you would like to register for any of our free webinars, you can register on our, our kittynomics.com site or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We are all under Kittynomics and that's Kittynomics, K-I-D-D-I-E-N-O-M-I-C-S. So, yeah, that's it right there. Yay! <laughs> Awesome. It has been a privilege and pleasure having Stacy and Mickey on our show today. Thank you both from our family here at E4X to your family, sending you lots of love and positivity and good luck this Friday. Um, and I know my nieces are currently five and, and three. So, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to send their mom the information. If they could look, they can look and start learning about their financial literacy. <laughs> yes. Kids learn through osmosis. So you think that they're not watching parents and they are. So, um, you know, I do say if our age group is eight to 13, but we do have kids younger and kids older that join Kidinomics. So if they're younger, you know, we do encourage the parents to be there and help explain things also and just help guide them. But yeah, check out Kidinomics at any age. Um, we are, we, we love, we just, we love our community and we just, and we, we want to expand it out. So yeah, thank you so much for having hey on empowered for x like what you guys are doing for the community is absolutely phenomenal and so so very needed so and this is this is i'm glad you started it a month ago so your anniversary comes up have us back on we'd be happy to celebrate your <laughs> anniversary with you that would be awesome right. thank, thank you and good luck on this journey thank you so much take care bye, bye. all thank you <laughs>